Welcome back everybody. Today we are gonna do something really cool. First of all, we're filming this little video in the tiny house that I built. Super cool. If you guys think that it's pretty sweet and you guys want me to do a little tutorial on the tiny house, tiny house living concept, be sure to leave a comment down below and we might address that. So what we're doing today is we're gonna make the best penny can stove I could come up with. But before we get going, I gotta make me a fire out here. Cause I don't come out here very often and it's a little bit chilly. Okay, so we'll let that fire start kicking up. Let me show you my little station I made out here. So this is my little workstation that I made. It's got everything that I need. This happens to be your first time here with us at Riverside Homestead Life. I welcome you to subscribe. We've got weekly tips. I try to come up with the cool stuff I can think of. And if you're already subscribing to this station, be sure to start it off with hitting the like button. It really helps out the station. Let's get going on this penny can burner. Okay, everyone, so this penny can stove, no joke, is on steroids. It's the best penny can stove out there. We're gonna go over an assortment of things. We're gonna go over wide body cans. We're gonna go over small cans. We're gonna go over thick aluminum cans. We're gonna perfect this thing. And this is a super, super cool thing to know how to do forever. Just know, in any circumstance, anywhere in the world, all you need to do is gather a few things and you've got a small stove component where you can warm stuff, cook stuff, warm soup, make tea, make coffee, you can do anything. Watch this, I'm super excited and this is a super cool, simple project. Okay, so part of the reason why I'm saying that we're improving the penny can stove, the ultimate penny can stove is this is the typical stove that most folks make. You see the diameter? What we can actually do is take an Arizona can, check out the difference in diameter. Then we can actually go one step above that, check out this Australian beer Foster's can. Take it up another notch. We are bringing this penny can stove to a whole new level. So another interesting fact about why this soda can stove or penny can stove is much superior. The aluminum in this can is much thinner than the aluminum in this can. And the aluminum in this can is much thinner than the aluminum in this can. So some might say this is the penny can stove or pop can stove on steroids. So what tools are we gonna need, you might think? Well, we're gonna need a pair of scissors, a pair of needle nose pliers, which I know most of you may not have. So you know where I got this today? The dollar store. Perfectly great usable pair of needle nose pliers from the dollar store. We're gonna need a great lighter. This right here is super cool. It's a nice little lighter dollar store. Unlike the traditional lighter that ruins your thumb if it's low, this guy right here from the Dollar Tree's got a simple push button. And you can refill it when it's empty. We're gonna need some sort of wood dowel. This happens to be a shish kebab little steak. We're gonna need one push pin. I grabbed two in case I drop one. We're gonna need a block of wood, something like this. It's about, oh, two to two and a half inches thick. We're gonna need some heat. It's an injector cleaner. 
You can spend about three bucks at Walmart or you can spend a dollar at the Dollar Tree. We're also gonna need some fiberglass insulation. Now you can pick this up uh, at Home Depot. You can do, get a little pipe repair kit or a pipe insulation kit. They're very small. You don't need to buy a whole roll of insulation for God's sake. This I happened to pull out from some old insulation that I knew that we had. Some folks may be able to just crawl into their crawl space, reach up into the floor and pull a little bit of fiberglass insulation out. And the last thing you're gonna need is a penny. Now when I say penny, I mean a real old penny. This is a 1959 and a 1978. and a 1963. Now you don't want anything newer than a 1983 because in 1983, they switched the penny. They started adding a whole bunch of zinc into the penny and less copper. So 1982 or earlier are the pennies that you wanna save. And it's as easy as that, that's all you're gonna need. So we're using heat today. Uh, you can also use denatured alcohol. Okay, so let's get this project underway. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this block of wood. Remember, Humax, Jumax, whatever this is called, mango peach. It's the Mexican styled little guava drink type things. These guys are super great because they're super thick aluminum, but we want a larger caliber. That's why this is the super penny can heater. So take your block of wood, put it right on the piece of tile, put this guy right down here, grab your little thumbtack, and now you can slide this guy around and scratch a line or You can take a marker or some type of writing utensil and do the same thing. You want to spin this around. We're going to have a nice even line all the way around the can. As you can see, we got a nice line all the way around the can. Now we're going to do that to the other can as well. As you can see, nice clean line, same size as the other one. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna flip this guy upside down. We're gonna take that push pin, we're gonna place it directly in the middle. And you're gonna push down. If you can't push through it, you're gonna take your block of wood and use it like a hammer. And that's gonna pop it right through. You don't have to be super strong to do that. You're gonna twist and pull back out. You're gonna do it again. This thicker aluminum, a little bit tougher to get through, so you gotta use this little block of wood like hammer. Spin it to get it loose. Cross the other way. See how that looks like a little number five off of a dice? That's what you want it to look like. Now, when you're making these holes, you want to make sure that you don't make it any larger than a penny. And after you got your little number five dice orientation, you want to take your little wood dowel or anything somewhat like this. It's got a little bit of a point on it. All you're going to want to do is you're going to want to widen that center hole just a little bit. So I'll put this right here. I'll take my wood block. Tap that down in there. What we're doing is we're just making it a little bit wider so your fuel can flow down through there. The other thing you might wanna do is come back and just make sure that your other four holes are nice and opened up. Make sure that you didn't close any of them up. And right there you have 
a number five with a thick center hole. It's kind of an ugly number five. <laughs> okay, so at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and do this Arizona can. We're gonna go ahead and do both sizes just to give you a little bit of a comparison. Lines around both sides. This size of can might be the only thing that you come across in an emergency situation. So, so obviously, the Jumex or Humex can is going to be better because it's got thicker aluminum than say the traditional 7-Up can. But if this is all you can do, this is going to be a great option. If you have the option of prepping and creating these things ahead of time, it's going to be worth your while to go and buy these larger cans. Okay, so the next step, we're going to take this little push pin. You see this little valley right here? You want to fall that push pin right in the middle and give yourself a starter hole. Just like so. Then take your block of wood, then take your block of wood, line it up on the hole, split the difference, draw a line, draw a line. Then do the opposite. Draw a line, draw a line. Now split those two differences. Draw a line, draw a line. Split those two differences. Draw a line, draw a line. Now go around and punch a hole on all those marks. It'll give you a nice even distribution of flame. See that? That's why I grabbed two push pins. Okay, so we have eight holes all the way around the perimeter. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go split that one more time with more holes. And at this point, you should just be able to eyeball. You don't need to use the stick to draw lines. Just eyeball where you wanna put it, right in between each hole, should be great. Just work your way around, split the difference. I'm telling you guys, this system is so cool. Like, you're, if you've never been in Boy Scouts, you're gonna feel like a Boy Scout or Girl Scout champ after making this little unit. Why do you need Boy Scouts when you got me? I'm gonna show you the tricks. So when you're done, if you count them all up, you should have about 16 holes looking just like that. Oh my gosh, folks, you guys are making a serious stove right now out of practically nothing. So on the Arizona can, um, you can simply just go around, tap it in, if you feel comfortable with knowing what about a quarter inch looks like, quarter inch to three eighths inch, just go around the whole perimeter and tap in a hole 
about every quarter to three eighths of an inch. All the way around. And that's what it looks like around the Arizona can. I just counted them, there's about 18 holes. Okay, so you're done with the block of wood, the push pin, so set those aside. Now you're gonna take your can and your scissor, and you're gonna come up way up here. Cut a can, cut a, cut a hole in the top, and then you're gonna work down, get about, oh, half inch away from your line, rough cut all the way around. Be really careful, this is gonna be super sharp. Then you're gonna to wanna to come in here, take your scissors, get nice and close. Maybe do a couple vertical cut downs. Then you're gonna come in and just follow your line. This is where you wanna go a little bit slower. You don't need to rush this, you want it to be nice and even. So once you get it, once you get started, and your scissors fit down here into the lower channel, it's gonna be a lot easier. Then you're gonna be on cruise control all the way down this interstate right here. Don't rush this. You want this line to be super straight. Okay, there we go. I have seen straighter lines, but this is gonna work. Go ahead and grab your other can, do the same thing. Looks like we're dripping a little bit here. You guys are not gonna see me sip this up because I am not a beer drinking man. I hate to disappoint all the bearded fellows out there. Okay, so we've got both cans cut. The super large and the large. We didn't even mess with the normal pop can size because if you guys have time to do some prepping, then this is the way to go. Okay, so the next step is you've got your end with the holes and you've got the end with no holes. Take your cap off of your little Sharpie, kind of put it together just like that. Then you're gonna go around just to give you a little guide all the way around the bottom of that. Then you're gonna take your other one, holes, don't do it on that one, one with no holes, same story.
It's gonna give you a depth. Then we're gonna take the needle nose pliers and we're gonna go down to that line, which is about a quarter inch off the bottom. And we're gonna give it a little quarter turn. Down an inch, quarter turn. Down an inch, quarter turn. Down an inch. I'm gonna to try to consistently get this needle nose pliers down to that same level. Quarter inch turn, come down. Quarter inch turn, down. Quarter inch turn, down. Just like so. Why we want to do that is we want it to look like that right when we're done. That way, when we take the top, we place them together and they fit together just like that. And here we are with the Arizona can. Same story. Now that bottom piece is gonna fit. Looks like I need to twist this end right here a little bit more. There we go. Same thing with the Arizona can. I'm gonna slide it right over just like that. Okay guys, we're getting somewhere. Next step, go ahead and take your fiberglass insulation. Like I said, you can reach in underneath your floor. If you go into your crawl space, pull out some fiberglass insulation. You go into an old wall if you needed to. You can also go to Home Depot and get some pipe wrap fiberglass insulation. It's super cheap, it's like three bucks. But in this case, I went ahead and did the cheap way and went and got some free stuff. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, try to gauge about how much you can get in there. Oh, I think about, what, this much? You're gonna stuff it down in there. You want it to be, you want it to be kind of nice and full. That looks pretty full. Take the Arizona can. Man, it's already fitting nice and tight. Uh, stuff that in there, got some more. What this is doing is you're kind of creating a wick. A wick so that when you go and you take this guy, put this over this. If you happen to drop this, it's not gonna spill everywhere. It's gonna soak up all the fiberglass and kind of contain it. So this is kind of a one-up step. <clears throat> You're making this system a better system by doing that. Now, next step, you wanna take your wood block. Now you can go around and easily tap it down. You gotta be really careful about this lower rim. You could definitely cut your thumb, you could cut your fingers while doing this. So be super careful. You can also take your little pliers, tap it down. Slide that one over. Let's get this guy. You want a nice even tap on it. What's gonna happen is you're gonna probably go a little bit over the lower rim. So you wanna go around with your thumbs. If you feel like you're gonna cut your finger on this aluminum, go ahead and throw a glove on or whatever, but I'm feeling pretty good about it at the moment. So I'm just gonna go around and push this, push this uh, aluminum in and kind of lock this whole system into place. I have a feeling that my uh, stepson is probably gonna wanna rob this from me on his little camping trips because it's gonna be pretty cool. Same thing on the little Arizona can. 
Don't risk cutting yourself. Throw on a glove if you feel like you need to. I do a lot of work around here, so my thumbs are pretty tough. They can handle all this. There we go. It's all locked into place. When you're done, spin these things around. If you feel like you got a high side, just tap that side down. Spin it around, make sure it's nice and easy. I can see that this spot right here is a little bit high. Tap it down, spin it. I'm liking it, it's looking good. Go ahead and go back around. Make sure you thumb down your lip. This can be sharp, be careful. As long as you run your thumbs in the same direction, I've never had a problem with cutting my thumb. There you go. Go ahead and do a little examination. You can also take this piece of wood, go around the bottom, make sure you got a nice roll around the bottom of that rim. Give it a nice little visual check, make sure you like it. It's gonna hold up as everything's straight. And you, my friends, are ready to add some fuel. Okay, so you might wonder, how am I gonna put this thing out when I light it? Take another can, cut down, cut right along that rim, and what you're essentially making is a cap to throw over the top of that flame and put it out. In this case, I did not have an extra can, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this cap down, get it shut about as much as possible, just like so. This guy right here is gonna go right over the top and smother the flame. Cool thing about using the top of the thing, as long as you can get your little flap down nice and tight, is you can hold it right here and bend that up. Now you got a little bit of a handle. So if you throw this over the top, it's gonna smother the oxygen quite a bit. All you should have to do is give it a little blow to like you're blowing out a candle. But then you've got a nice little handle. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take the fuel. We're gonna fill it up. It's gonna soak right in. It's soaking in great. Go ahead and keep on going. You, see, you notice I put this piece of tile right down on the table and there's no reason for you to ruin your surfaces. So this happens to be a piece of slate, just an extra scrap that I had laying around. Uh, you could use a big board, you could use a lot of things. Slowly soaking up. Let's go ahead and get this Arizona can at the same time. You happen to spill a little bit around the bottom of the can, that's okay, it's gonna help prime. Okay, so when you see it, it's going in super slow. You know that it's reaching the, near the top. Grab your lighter and go ahead and light these bad boys. Okay, they're gonna start burning. What they're doing right now is they're priming. I know you guys can't totally see the, the flame, but they are on. Prime. We're gonna go ahead and kill some of these lights. Hole, go ahead and throw your paint. What it's gonna do is it's gonna cut off the oxygen to that exhaust and create pressure 
give you a good burning flame. And once it primes, you're gonna see these flames calm down. Let's go ahead and move this one over. I'm not gonna mess around with it. I didn't get it all the way full. So this is the Arizona can side. This is the one that's a little bit more superior, but I kind of wanted to get two of them going for you, but I don't think that I filled this guy up all the This way. little stove is, what it's gonna do is it's gonna cook you up food. You're gonna have soup, you're gonna have meat, you're gonna have fish. You're gonna be able to cook right over this little pop can stove, little penny can stove. As you can see, this little stove puts off great amount of heat. As you guys can see, this thing works super, super great. I feel like the denatured alcohol burns a little bit cleaner, but I mean, you can cook on top of that bad boy right there. You can warm up soup, cook a meal. You can make these out of pop cans, Arizona cans, or those big old beer cans that I showed you. This one here, I moved the big beer can one out of the way. This one happens to be the Arizona can, burning really nice. Thought I'd let her run. If you guys like those Crisco candles in the background, I'll put a link at the end of the video for those if you'd like to learn how to make those things. Those candles right there will burn for about a month. Gives you light, use them for cooking, warming up stuff, super smart. Also, if you guys have never done this before, I urge you to try it outside, get comfortable with it. Make sure that you always have a way to put out a fire in case you guys have an accident. I hope you guys like this tip. Super cool one to have in the back pocket. Be sure to hit the like button. It really helps out the station. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. we got lots of great videos to come. Take care and God bless. Also, if you guys are interested in seeing this thing, heat up some food. I bought this cool little guy at Dollar Tree for one dollar. I will also link another video at the end of this video if you guys would like to see this guy in action, heating up some soup, heating up some tea, seeing it work.